Hello everybody and thank you so much for joining me tonight at City Craft Club. We are going to be using hot transfer foil to create some really beautiful designs. So when I first learned about hot foiling, I was very mystified. I didn't understand how it worked, um, but after doing some research, I realized it's incredibly easy and you can make endless projects that look very impressive. For example, cards, of course. These two are just uh, spooky season cards because it is October right now. P.S. If you do like these cute little designs, they are on my website. I will link them below. You can also make gift tags. And as we're going to work on today, you can make some beautiful home decor. Now, this is, of course, an homage to the city that I love so much. If you, like I, love New York, if you're a New Yorker, and even if you're not, you just love this print, we are going to be walking through that. If you don't love that design, do not worry. You can totally use your own. Think of this as a beginner's crash course in hot foiling. Let's go. Before we get into the project itself, I just want to do a super high level overview of what the hell this craft actually is in case you are feeling as I was when I first saw all of these beautiful foil designs and I was like not understanding frankly how a printer, a laminator, all this stuff sort of came together. Basically, this stuff requires three elements to activate and create the beautiful designs that we want to create. First, heat, of course. Heat transfer foil requires heat, which you get from a laminator. Secondly, pressure to sort of smush, if you will, the foil on top of your design, which we also get from a laminator when it runs your printed out piece of paper through. And finally, it requires laser jet toner ink specifically. Inkjet printer ink, sublimation ink, sorry, not gonna work for this project because toner ink grips onto this foil. As you're about to see, you're going to print out your design, you're going to layer the foil over top in a specific sort of sandwich method, you're going to run it through your laminator, you're gonna open it up, you're gonna peel off the foil, and what is left over will be all of the foil that has stuck to the toner ink, i.e. your printed out design, to leave behind a beautiful result. So the first thing you will need in addition to a glass of wine is of course foil. There are different types of foil, so it's extremely important to ensure first and foremost that you are purchasing a foil that is a heat transfer foil. Oftentimes they will come in rolls, which is my preferred method of using foil because it's more economical than buying sheets of foil. Next, you will need a regular laminator or a specifically designed foiling machine, which frankly is kind of just a laminator, but you know, sort of guzzied up. I actually have the Heidi Swap Mink machine, which I absolutely adore, and it is made specifically for foiling. I have though foiled with a regular laminator and the results are almost the same. The thing I love about the Heidi Swap though is A, it's pink. <laughs> aesthetically pleasing in my craft room, and also has some predetermined settings for heat. So my results are a little more even, but again, if a laminator is all that you have right now, or the only thing that's in budget, definitely do not worry about getting some sort of uh, souped up foiling machine per se. With a laminator, of course, you will need laminating sheets. I like to get the ones from Scotch. I will link them below, of course. You will also need a laser jet printer. Toner, black toner specifically, is the only type of ink that your foil is going to adhere to. You can buy them relatively inexpensively at Amazon. I think I got mine for under $100, so I will link mine below. If a printer is not in your budget right now, you can always go to a FedEx, Staples, any sort of copy store and have your design printed out. Next, you will need copy paper. You'll need scissors. Of course, you will also need a surface for your design to go onto. You can use virtually any type of paper, or cardstock that you would like, so long as it is not too thick to run through your printer. If you're not positive of how thick of a piece of paper your specific printer can handle, definitely check the manual, or if you lost it like I absolutely did, you can just Google it and they usually have a PDF online for your specific printer, and that should tell you the maximum thickness of paper. Finally, you will need a design. Simple shapes, lines, letters do best with this. Of course, you wouldn't want to use, say, a black and white photo, or maybe you would, I don't know. I've never tried it. I don't think that would turn out well. So let's head on over to find the design that I showed you in my New York print. If you're not into this design, of course, just follow along and replace with your own image. 
To access this New York design, click below in the video description. I will have it linked there. And to give credit to the artist, and just in case you're interested, I got this original typography image from unsplash.com. It is royalty free, which means you can use it under the Unsplash license for home use. And basically I pressed download up here and then I uploaded it to canva.com. And once I uploaded the image to Canva, I did a little bit of tweaking of my own and came up with this nice crisp design. This is already sized for the frame that I've linked below. If you are using it for a different size, simply right click, press detach image, press on this like blue and green thing, press delete, and then just resize it to suit your needs. One quick tip on color for your image with foiling. You certainly do not want to change your image, whether it's this one or any other image that you may be using to anything except for black and white. And you want your blacks to be as inky black as they possibly can be. I've made the mistake of using grays and sort of different shades of black, if you will, 50 shades of black, lighter black and whatever. And that does not foil as well, because remember our foil is activated by heat and by the toner. The toner is what is printing out your image um, in black. So just make sure that it's as black and dark as possible. Once you're satisfied with your image, press share in the upper right hand corner and then press download. PNG, nothing else to do here. Press download, wait for a few seconds. Okay, so our nice crisp black and white design is ready to send to the printer. So all we have to do for that is of course, just command P if you're on Mac, file print, whatever you usually do to print out your images. And make sure that you are selecting the correct printer, especially if you like I have a zillion different printers. I've actually renamed this particular printer my foil printer. You can see I've also done that with my sublimation. It just makes it a lot easier. Hot tip. Okay, so it looks good to go. Just press print and here we go. So now that we have our printed out design, looks great, looks nice and clean and stark, we are going to put our foil over top and run it through our laminator or foiling machine. But before we do that, we're going to pick a color of foil that we want to use. For this one, I'm actually thinking I might do red. I realize that's a bit of a risky choice, but I, I love the pink and red color combo, so I'm just gonna give it a go. So simply roll out your heat transfer foil over your design such that it is covering the entire design. And I like to have about a quarter of an inch beyond what the design actually is, just to make sure in case the foil slips when it's in the laminator, that there is still foil covering the design. I'm going to grab my scissors, cut it. covers our design, looks good to go. Next, grab two pieces of regular copy slash printer paper. The first one you're going to place down on your surface underneath this whole situation here, and then place your foil and your design directly over top of the printer paper. Grab another piece of printer paper and Simply place it directly over your design. Double check that you know the foil hasn't shifted. You could also use some painter's tape. I have done that before and it's of course a lot better for holding uh, foil in place than regular tape would be because it doesn't rip off the surface as much, but I just find it's honestly not necessary and it's a lot easier just to kind of do it without tape or any sort of adhesive. Okay. So now that we have our nice little sandwich of sorts with foil and our design inside, so we are going to grab a laminating pouch and simply open it. So once you've opened your laminating pouch, there is a line of demarcation here um, that shows you where it folds. Sorry guys, it's kind of hard to see because I realize it's sort of invisible and I'm, I'm working on a white surface, but you'll know what I mean once you have peeled yours apart. And we're just going to place our foil sandwich. Double check it, mine actually shifted a little bit, so just making sure that it's covered everything on the design. And close the laminating pouch directly over top. All right. 
So this is what we have. And now it is time to go turn on our laminator or our foiling machine. Okay, so I have plugged in my foiling machine, the Heidi Swap Mink machine into an outlet. Turn on your machine, there's a power switch in the back. From there, simply press the gold button in the center four times. So as you can see, pressing this button four times will bring you to a level three heat setting, which I find to be a pretty standard heat setting that works for most materials. If you were, say, using you know, a thicker material, you would want to go most likely higher to a four or a five, or if you were using a really thin material, you would want to do a one or a two. Zero is literally nothing, so never do that. But like I said, three is a pretty standard heat setting for the Heidi Swap Mink Machine. For laminators, I would do a medium or high heat, depending on what your capabilities are. But again, I have used many laminators that do not have any special heat settings that work just fine. Okay, so if you have this machine, you're going to see that it's blinking red. That means it's still heating up. And once it turns green and we hear a beep, that means it's ready for us to insert our project. So it's ready to go. Grab your sandwich with the laminating sheets over top and simply insert the entire thing into your foiling machine or laminator. Now you'll know that the laminator has sort of picked it up once you literally feel it sort of sucking it in. If for some reason you're not feeling that, Definitely double check and make sure you don't have the reverse feature on. I've definitely done that before. It's a button back here on the Heidi Swap, at least, and also on some laminators, where it literally reverses the feed and, of course, will not pull your project in. So just double check that if you're having issues. Otherwise, it should be pretty straightforward. Well, the laminator kind of does all of the work for you. foiled piece of work. Of course, it's still inside of our little pouch, so how do we get it out? Grab your scissors and very carefully cutting along the end, the bottom end or the side, wherever it seems easiest to access your project. So you're just trying to create an opening in this sealed shut laminating pouch and once you do you can open your pouch okay Here's the fun part. You can already sort of see the grand reveal. Let's do a full reveal. Take your paper out of the sandwich. Be careful it doesn't stick to anything and rip. Okay, peel your project away from the laminating pouch. And here's the super fun part. Grab any end that you so please of your foil and slowly peel back to reveal some really beautiful work. Thank you so much for stopping by tonight. I had the best time making this foil print. I hope that you did too, and I hope yours turned out exactly as you wanted it to. If for some reason you ran into issues, if I didn't explain something clearly, please do let me know below in the comments. If you did enjoy this video, if you learned something new, please give me a thumbs up. That would mean the world to me. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, it would also mean the world to me, and I would love to keep up with you on all things crafting. Until then, ciao.